Year 8 did not start as planned, everybody. Week 1 was a tough game. We only showed up there in the fourth quarter and then blew it on the final drive of the game. But now we got Week 2 today, and we are primed to look a lot different because we have a lot of changes between now and Week 2. Time to show you guys what I'm talking about. Before we jump into this Week 2 game, though, I made a lot of adjustments to our playbook just because... Over the last year with Wagner on this team especially, it's been very apparent that half to half, week to week, you know, game to game, it's just way too inconsistent and the receivers aren't getting open. And we're also not following the game plan that I set up in weekly strategies. So one of my goals here is to put a playbook together where I'm getting the play calling that I want regardless of what I choose for a gameplay. Because really, what the game plan does, it does not, you know, call those kinds of plays. It's just if you do call those plays, like if you scheme for uh, throwing it deep in a game, and you choose plays where you are throwing the ball deep, then you'll have a couple of different things probably go better for you than if you scheme for something else. Um, like if you scheme to defend the short route pass, uh, on the defensive side of the ball, then you're going to get beat by double move routes a lot more in that game if the other team calls them. So those don't really affect what you're calling. They affect how good you are in certain play calls. So what I've done is I've gone through every single formation, every single set that is available in the game. And I went through and I added all the plays that I liked, or at least most of the plays that I liked, and I took out all the ones that I know were not working for us that were already in this playbook, because I am pretty much basing this off of the Dolphins playbook. So I have sig significantly adjusted the play calling script, especially like I've one gone through every single play and taken on all the ones that I know don't work. Like I took out every single jet sweep because we keep doing those. We keep losing at least two yards per per one of those. I took out um, Pretty much all the pitch out plays and I added a lot more outside runs with, you know, halfback stretch and all that stuff. So this first thing you're seeing right here on your screen is the first and 10 uh, situation, which the game is bad. So there's a glitch where it's not even showing up here, but I have for at least first and 10, I've got um, a balance of, you know, inside outside runs and plenty of passes, play action or otherwise. And I also added a lot of um, spread plays, if I can find those. I added um, several different uh, plays and different, you know, spread sets. Because before this, the, the Dolphins playbook did not have any uh, plays with the spread besides four verticals. And I took all, all, all those plays out because we were calling that too often too. So if I can find it all the way down here, you can tell probably how long it took me to go through all these plays. Because there's so many goddamn sets, but I went through every single different spread set that there is, and I added plays that I liked because I want to get Randolph out there more. I want our receivers out there more than just having, you know, Matthew Williams go out wide and things like that. So um, most of these sets don't have any plays, but I added a couple if I can find. Maybe I didn't add that many spread plays, at least here in the shotgun, but there should be some here. Um... Well, regardless, I have already tested the playbook out um, in a uh, exhibition game, and I liked what I saw. There were four receiver sets. I think I, I had a couple of plays where you got you know double stacks like this uh, with stack out. So plays like that are where the receivers will come out more often. Um, but I have also added a lot of uh, plays where where there's not as many curl routes, there's not as many routes where somebody is stopping on their route. Pretty much every passing play has, at the most, one route that is going to stop somewhere uh, on like a hitch. So everything else is going to be a route that's going to keep on going across the field until the person is at the sideline and they can just, you know, free roam until uh, Wagner gets rid of it. So the game plan here is just to give us uh, one better pass plays, uh, deeper pass plays, and more medium pass plays, less short route plays, and just overall a better playbook where we're not running plays that we know don't work like jet sweeps, like pitch outs, 
and also just hopefully can improve the play calling in general because there were some times where we would run the ball on third and nine for no reason even though it was like the second quarter that would make no sense to me so i've gone through every single situation and i have adjusted it to what i want to see and the first game that i watched with this in exhibition the only game that i watched was actually uh, a very impressive offensive game with a team pretty similar to the year eight rams so that's your new playbook for now and now we're going to see it in action today, right now in week two. I have also heavily considered changing up either our defensive playbook or our defensive scheme. I just have not been a fan of sometimes, you know, seeing players like Candidate, you know, in coverage on somebody like a tight end. When he is a big guy, he is supposed to be only out there for, you know, run stopping. And it's not even because of my specialist uh, depth chart, it's because of... The game just being bad, I, I have seen that um, in uh, some people's franchises, you know, regardless of, of what they have on their specialist depth chart, uh, the game's auto subs and the uh, the uh, formation subs are different no matter what they do, and you can't even change it once you go in the game unless you change someone's po po position around to, uh, to, to make do with that. So, I'm considering uh, going to a 4-3, and I'm going to talk about another reason why after this but you know right now we don't really have you know too many scheme fits for the 4-3 about 70 percent but you would really have to change up your linebackers and where certain guys are playing at so i think for now i will stick with the base 3-4 but i do kind of want to switch things up and go with a different defensive playbook just try something different for now and i think i can just go with maybe the pittsburgh playbook and you know see if that one will work for us better. But one thing that was kind of my fault uh, for really the, the longest time with this team is that Warren Terry in a base 3-4, he is essentially playing as a nose tackle. And nose tackles, typically you want them to be around 330 or, or, or more. And Warren Terry is not that. He is only 302 pounds, so he is... A, a smaller, you know, he, he looks huge, but he is smaller than most typical nose tackles. So he's not taking up as much room on the defensive line as other nose tackles would be. I've already gone through a couple of rosters like, like the Ravens. And they obviously have an actual nose tackle on their team. And, you know, despite his, his fantastic play, he might be better suited for a 4-3 to three scheme, which would also allow a chance for somebody like Carl Graham who we have seen a lot of highlights for, step in as a starter as well. So we could think about that. We could think about moving Tremaine Candidate to, to a DT as well. Uh, but one last change I'm going to make, we already um, put in Ruiz over Ernest Jones for now. But on the specialists, I kind of want to see uh, Raheem Finch start at uh, one of these pass rushing specialist spots across from Baz Knight. We'll have Carl Graham as the rush DT because he's been great in that area so far this year. Now Warren Terry can play that too, and but he's probably better suited for that right now, just straight up. Um, but Carl Graham's been impressive, and I want to see more from Raheem Finch. We saw him for a couple of plays last year, get a couple of tackles for loss and a couple of sacks, but really he hasn't had that much to do, so looking for more from him. But here we go. Back at home in SoFi Stadium for, I think, the first time this season. I think our first game was at Levi Stadium. So, our first home game this year. If you guys would not mind, please do like and subscribe. And comment down below. It helps my channel grow and uh, just makes it easier for me to make content for you guys and get more out to you and better content too. So, we'd really appreciate that. But here we go. We beat Arizona in a pretty fun game uh but pretty low scoring towards the tail end of last season but now we've got them again here against joey simpson so out comes the offense for the first time with the new playbook changes all the adjustments we'll see how good or bad we look in this first quarter i guess on this first possession i thought wagner played pretty well back in week one um you know didn't play great or anything but i thought he played well the first play, it's caught by Stoudemire in traffic. Wow, what a grab for 25 yards for the third year usual slot receiver. But this year, that's going to be Trevor Offords 
um, spot for now. We already got Randolph out there for a play. Love to see him get involved early on. I was looking to add more plays for, you know, four receiver sets, and that's going to work out there, but Donald can't lay out for it enough. Let him too much from Wagner, and now third and three. It's a first down. Trevor offered on that little just in route. They keep it going. On the 41. Crossbody throw, it's caught by Offord again. Good idea by Wagner. Had pressure there in his face. He finds his man to turn up field for a first down. Good space creation by Offord there in the slot. Was Thompson making the tackle. This is Williams' his first carry. Nice cut back up field inside the 10. 14 yards on his first give. We'll see how good the run game does. We didn't really run the ball all too well in week one. So we'll see if we'll have a good impact here. But we score a touchdown on this opening drive. And, I mean, that was clinical. That was a great opening drive. Can't ask for much more than that. And uh, a touchdown here on the first drive after... Our only points came on our last couple of possessions there in week one. So already a much better start than we saw in our last game. Seven plays, a shy of 80 yards on that drive. And out comes Joey Simpson to lead this Arizona offense. At a one touchdown, one INT, just over 200 passing yards. And their week one loss, they lost 34-19. to I forget against two, though. First play, this is caught, I guess, by Quentin Clifton. Down at the, like, 40-ish yard line of the Rams. Just inside the 45. And we're going to challenge this one. Now, I thought he did, did, did not get both feet inbounds, but apparently he did. And the replay did not show us any actual definitive... Uh, proof, so that wasn't helpful at all. Second down and 10 for the Cardinals, though, and we get to them! Bass Knight's there out of the backfield, and so is Tremaine Candidates. They both get half a sack on that one. That makes it third and 19 for the Cardinals. They go to a screen pass, but too much pressure, and they have to throw it away. Already seeing some early pressure. Way better than what we saw in week one against Brock Purdy. And that offensive line. This run goes nowhere out of the pistol. So I'm going to try and keep my eye out for plates that aren't working more than, you know, once in terms of like, you know. Oh, wait, there's a pass to Offord. Oh, my, what a toss from when That was a great throw right in the baskets for Trevor Offord. Holy cow. This is the, the strong arm. The deep throw accuracy that we know Wagner has. He's better at this than short throws. So I tried to put in some more deep ones. And so far we're seeing him take advantage of them. It's five yards to Donald hanging on through the contact. Plenty of big hits by the Cardinals so far. But so far we, we have hung on to him. But as I was saying. Uh, I'm going to try and keep my eye out for plays that aren't working multiple times in this game. Like uh, the one out of the pistol. If that one does not work on the next time that we do it, I'll probably just take it out of our playbook and put something else in there as a run play. Nice little play here. Great pickup on the block for Williams and BJ Trainers at to the down to the five. That was a very quick throw for Wagner, like a tight end screen. I kind of like that play call. So we go first and goal from the five. Three and a half in the first quarter, and a hole opens up. Williams walks in untouched. Zach McCoy just plugs up ahead and just frees a path up. And the Rams are off to an electrifying start here in the first quarter. The PAT from Koo makes it 14-0. Another seven-play drive for a touchdown. So 14 plays on offense, two touchdowns. And we're looking pretty good here in the first quarter. This is Simpson. Flushed out and taken down again. This time it's Carlos Ruiz and Quincy Baznay once again. So Baznay now adds up to one total sack, but really has two sacks because he's been the first guy there both times and has made the tackle. He just has help. So really good start for Baznay there. 
The numbers won't really show it entirely. Third and 19, and he goes down again. This time it's Finch and Forbes in the backfield for our third stack already here in the first 11 minutes of action. Amazing start for both sides of the football. Don't forget that we are rocking a different playbook on defense. And this Pittsburgh playbook does not have any 4-3 to three or 4-4 four to four sets. Uh, which the Rams defense playbook did have. Which I think was maybe causing those plays where Candidate was in coverage. So we'll see if that pops up here. But have not seen it yet. And we got offered wide open back in the red zone are the Rams. An 11 for 12 start for Wagner, 163 through the air, and Trevor Offord is having himself a day so far out of the slot. Very happy with what, what I'm seeing from these two players, but now Offord missed a block for Williams, and he loses five yards because of it. So we'll keep an eye out for that play. Maybe get that wide receiver block out of that play, and Make amends there, but the first quarter is over. 14-0, and the Cardinals have shown no signs of life on offense thanks to our strong defensive start. So from the 20-yard line, back to Williams. He churns his legs and gets about four yards back to set up third down and 11. Do we go for the end zone? Gonna go play action. Rhino's looking the wrong way. Now he turns around, pressure coming, and he throws it out of bounds this is second incompletion but the cardinals force the field goal attempt from coup it's up and good 17 to nothing very happy so far with this performance cardinals get it back from their own 25 yard line still trying to i think get their the second first down of the game they had the one to clift it on the first play but since then they have not moved the ball whatsoever this is dumped off for Leach, who breaks a tackle from Forbes, but Levy still gets there in time. To set up third and long. Good protection for Sims, and now he steps up, and it is intercepted, undercut by George Vance. He points out blockers on his defense. He takes it all the way inside the red zone. What a play for our defense. Huge one. Absolutely huge. George Vance with the INT. A replay this one. He had a man kind of open, but to be honest, I think, I think Buda Baker is also there on David Jett, but Vance undercuts the, the throw and takes it many yards. I think like a 40-yard return or something. Nice spin move there by Matthew Williams. Second and five from the 10. Good protection, first down. Big hit on Stoudemire, but he hangs on. We got first and goal again. We give it to Williams, and he's once again in there untouched. Two touchdowns here in the first half for Williams. Three for the Rams so far, and we are looking great. This time it's the defense creating field position for the offense, and we make the most of it. Just a couple of plays to get ourselves back in the end zone, and we lead the Cardinals. By four possessions, 24 nothing, Incredible. Only four yards for the Cardinals, 200 for the Rams. They start from their 20-yard line on this next drive. 7.32 on the clock. Simpsons got good protection, but it's incomplete. Off the hands of Irv Smith Jr. He just dropped it. Back to the air on second. Simpson under pressure. He dumps it off for Jet this time. To bring up third down and five. It's just first reception of the game. They need five yards, and they've got it. That is Tyler Scott with Richards there in coverage. Short gain. He brought pressure with Ruiz. They got four yards out of it. And now a false start, it looks like, on Arizona. They're going to be going backwards. That is not what you want to see when you've had a pretty horrible offensive start. They pitch it out. This is Leach on the ground, but nowhere to go. Third down and 11 coming up. And the defense get off the field here. Simpson under pressure. He got the pass away. There's a flag down, though. 
This is going to be on us. So it's a late penalty. And it's going to be pass interference on Richards, really? The best corner in the entire league? First and 10 Cardinals, I guess. Right back to the ground, but nothing so far. Great job, really, just all around by this defense. On the move, this one is broken up. How did Levy jar that one loose? Irv Smith just couldn't hang on. Way down the field in coverage. Now he's in the zone. Third and nine. Simpson cross body. Nobody there. They're forcing a lot of incompletions thanks to forcing Simpson outside of the pocket. And so far, I mean, that is what the Rams did back in our championship season, folks. If we can do this week after week, I mean, this, this defense will be right back to where they were uh, three years ago. We get it back, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Full house, Swagner launches down the field. It is broken up by Donald, or for Donald. Number 24 there in coverage. That's that one away on the, on the peak of that catch. Just a good play by him. And now the ball's out. Stoudemire lost it. Malcolm Izzo recovers, and he also jarred it loose. The Rams cough it up. Pretty much a, a very rare fumble from this team, but Stoudemire has been known to fumble. We saw a couple of returns last year where he fumbled on them. And Malcolm Izzo with the forced fumble and the recovery on that play. A lot of big hits by this Arizona defense so far, and now they've got their first turnover because of it. So the Cardinals get it back pretty much within the red zone. Simpson down the field. He's got Clifton in the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinals. You know, just like we took advantage of our INT, they take advantage of the forced fumble. And they get on the board. Their first time crossing the pylon here this game. So it's back to a two-touchdown lead for the Rams, but still plenty of time to go here in the first half to tack on some more points if we want to do it. There's four yards on the ground for Matthew Williams. Don't forget he already has those two touchdowns, trying to add more to it. This time, Wagner Lee is trimming Donald a bit too much over the middle. That brings up third down. Cardinals bring pressure. Wagner has to get rid of it, and... A late pass for Offord, sells out of bounds. A three and out force by Jerry Hall in this Cards defense. And they quickly have the ball back in their hands. This is Irv Smith breaking a couple of tackles and slipping his way upfield. Just shy of the 40 yard line. Out of the warning, all three timeouts still for the Cardinals. We brought pressure with Ruiz and they got a quick throw out to Clifton. Been busy early on in this game. And now Tyler Scott on the reception. To bring up third and short. Just shy of the 50. Stimson intercepted. That's Daniel Levy. Are you kidding me? Hell yes, dude. This guy is showing you why he is an X Factor. And he's showing you why he's going to be a big part of this defense for many, many years. He just jumps the short route over the middle for Scott. It's just a slant, really. And he read that the entire way. First and 10. Just shine the 50 for us. And now across it to the 41. Trevor offered for a first down. He's been having a great day here in the first half. Under a minute to go. Check down for Matthew Williams. 15 for 20 for Widener, man. 75%. Passing percentage. Maybe it's higher than that. First and 10. On the 31. This is hauled in. Williams breaks a tackle and it is inside the 10 yard line. We're not going to call timeout yet. And now we do after taking like 12 extra seconds off the clock. So seven left. We stay out there. We're going to go for the end zone one time. Wagner just throws it away. Now we should settle for the field goal and just take the three possession lead into halftime, which we do in a coup, of course. Hate that he's been perfect all year long so far. And we lead at halftime 27 to 10.
awesome, awesome performance thus far by both sides. Meanwhile, you got the Niners hosting the Chargers at Levi's Stadium, and they're in a close game, but down 6-7 to seven probably at the break to the currently winless Chargers. The Jets lead the 0-1 Dolphins 14-0 at halftime thanks to two picks thrown by Johnny Murphy. Meanwhile, the Patriots, who are 0-1, lead the 1-0 Mike Cop led Vikings 10-7. We beat them in a very awesome game to close out last season. So they were a fun team to play against. But here we go in the second half against the Cardinals trying to hopefully play as good as we did there in the first half here in the second. Well, they start with the ball and they got Leach outside on a huge gain across the 50. And that's their best play on offense all day long, no doubt about it. So they're already in plus territory from the 46. Lofted and complete, trying to go for Smith. Next play, this is Leach spinning away from Levy, but a lot of Rams defenders there in the area. Next play, screen to Leach, and Levy's there again in the backfield. Nice tackle. Fourth and nine, and the Cardinals. Punt the ball away. First look at the offense here in this second half. We give it to Williams, but he's hit down pretty quickly. 10 carries, 38 yards. So 3.8 per so far. Second down and eight down the field and caught. That's Donalds. Across midfield up to the Cardinals 45 yard line. Just his second reception here in this game so far. But he had a step on the defender and Wider with a perfect throw to lead him right out of bounds on a nice big chunk play. Right back to the ground with Williams, but no holes opening up. Pretty good job by this Cardinals run defense thus far. Next play, Greg Teal takes a spill. He just got bulldozed. And it leads to a Nolan Smith sack. He lose a good amount of yardage, third and 21. Back to our 43, and we just get conservative and just hand it off to Williams, and we just give up on the on the, on the drive, I guess. So we punt the ball away. The Cardinals come back out, 6-16 to go here in the third. Still down by three scores. Irv Smith for a first down. Simpson now across. 100 yards on the day through the air. Leach taken down that time by Emmanuel Forbes. Good tackle. Second down. It is intercepted again. It's Terry Hackett. And now he's got daylight. And he is gone. Our third pick of the day off Simpson. And this time we take it to the house. This defense looks a lot different here in week two. A lot different. We're forcing pressure, we're forcing turnovers, we're making plays everywhere across the fields. This is Rams football. This is what we looked like. This was the dominance that we showed in that Super Bowl season. We're still trying to get back there. It's just one week, but we're looking damn good right now. It's 34 to 10. Rams in full control. Almost picked off again by Richards. But it goes off his hands. And now a hole opens up for Leach up the guts. He's got a first down. It's a two big chunk runs here in the second half after getting nothing going in, in, in the first. As four was bats down that pass attempt. Bring up second down. Got to get to the 43 for a first. Leach fakes out Forbes, but... The Rams tackling right now has been great. Team tackling so far. A lot of defenders just closing in on these ball handlers. This is Simpson down the field. Broken up by George Vance. Trying to find Scott down the sideline. Another punt forced by this defense. We take over just under three and a half to play in the quarter. Good protection for Wagner. And he dumps it for Donald who cannot keep himself in bounds. Now we go to Williams, but 
Nothing opening up right now thanks to this offensive line, but these defenders have been everywhere. These linebackers are closing these gaps right now on the ground game. Third and six. Wagner throws it away, and Rams go three and outs. So not liking the offense that much here in the third quarter. Hasn't been, you know, horrible. But Bazite's there in the backfield for a three-yard loss. He's made play after play here in this game. He's got two half sacks, and he's now he's got a tackle for loss in the back foot, and now we got Levy there after only a one-yard gain. It's a third and 12. Our top defensive playmaker showing up here in this game thus far. Good protection for Simpson, and he's got a man. Perfect throw. That is Irv Smith Jr. Just over the head of Carlos Ruiz. It's his first tackle, but that was a dot right over his head. And now we are closing in once again on, on, on the ground game after a couple of plays to open the half. And the third quarter is over. Cardinals still trying to score here. I've not scored since the second quarter. 11 to play in this game. Screen pass. This is Leach on the reception. But that is George Vance who continues to make plays in this game. He, Levy, Vaz Knights, they've all been out there making some plays over the middle though caught in between defenders that is David Jets that was a good step up throw there by Joey Simpson in the red zone now and it's almost picked off and should have been by Richardson second time dropping a pass right off his hands that would have been her fourth INT too Leach has good blocking and he's gonna get in the end zone nearly untouched just a massive hole opens up. The offensive line just clears the way. Everybody's got caught. They're going to go for two as well to make it a 16-point contest. And they've got Irv Smith wide open right on the edge of the end zone. So 34-18, they score their first points of the half. The offense has not scored yet in the second half. But we've got Donald up the C for a first down. Just shy of the 50. That is how you start a drive. Now we go back to the ground, but once again, as soon as a hole is there and Williams gets to it, it closes immediately. Second down and nine. Short throw for David Parson, it looks like. Set up third down and five. In the pistol, out to offered first down. He's been very reliable in this game, getting wide open on these throws. And Wagner's finding him. They've got a connection right now. He's got 126 yards so far in this game. Play action. It's a bootleg out to Parson. Inside the red zone are the Rams. Wagner over 300 passing yards in this game. He has looked really, really good. From the 16. A screen for Williams. He cuts up field and reaches across for the first down. First and goal Rams from the six. They give it to Williams again, but just like last time, this run out of the pistol has not been working. So I'm going to take that one out of our playbook once this game is over. Now from the 10 after a four-yard loss on that play. End zone shot overthrown. Out of bounds, trying to go for Parson back of the end zone. That brings up third down, and same thing. This time it's batted away, though, but still trying to find Parson at the pylon. So we settle for three, but our first point scored here in the half, and we're back up by three scores. So a pretty key drive right there with five to play. This is eight incomplete in traffic, three blue shirts in the area including Richards and George Vance. Got Levy back in the zone for second and 10. Not much there for Leach out of the backfield. So third and long. Simpson steps up, but he's taken down from behind by Quincy Baznight. Not a sack, but he brought the pressure off the edge to force Simpson to take off. And he still made that tackle too. The fourth and seven coming up. Just a really nice play by 45. He's been all over the place in this game. I like what I'm seeing from him. Levy's still in the zone. They're going to go forward here on fourth. 
Simpson crossbody throw with pressure in his face, and it goes nowhere. Great, great job by this defense. We take over just shy of the red zone, but Wagner takes a sack on the first play. That was given up by Braden Smith, and it was Nolan Smith once again for his second sack. So a 15-yard loss there after a really good starting field position. And only a two-yard gain here to Trevor Offord. So another third and long. We're going to throw it. But now pressure gets there. We got Williams breaking a tackle from Izzo, but still 15 yards shy of the sticks. Field goal to make it a 40-point game. It is up, and it is good. 40 points for the Rams. And we come out on top in this one, 40 to 18. A very different game compared to week one. And I liked a lot of what I saw here in this game. A very impressive win against a rival, no less. That is a huge win for this team. Now, the offense, you know, wasn't as good in that second half. Obviously, uh, could have played better, but still overall played very, very well. And um, very impressed, man. Wagner had one of his best games that we've ever watched. 327, one touchdown, no picks, 26 for 35, 9.3 YPA. That is what I am looking for right there. We got to Simpson four times, picked him off three times, and also our longest pass was for 38 yards. That's what I'm talking about. The ground game could not really get things going, especially there in the second half. And Leach ran the ball well when he got the carries, but it was really Trevor Offord's day to speak of. A touchdown, 128 yards. Very good day for him. Donald gets 62, 46 for Sotomayor, 45 for Williams. Um, and we had two sacks allowed by Braden Smith. Um, but two tackles for loss for Levy plus an INT. We had a sack for Baz Knight, a sack for Graham, and a half sack for Carl Forbes, Ruiz, Candidate, and Raheem Finch with INTs from Levy, George Vance, and Terry Hackett actually had the touchdown on defense too. So really good uh, effort by him. And young Wing Koo hit all four field goals and all four PATs. A perfect day for him as well. We go into week three facing the Patrick Mahomes-led Chicago Bears and a lot of green for us right there, which is nice to see. We got a game plan for the elite quarterback in this game. And we're just slowing him down again. I'm going to say limiting his passing, no doubt about it. It's, it's got to be the goal. Our defense gets plus to man in zone coverage. Should help us. Upgrade point for Jesse Wagner out of this game, and I gotta keep going. I'm gonna go Improviser this time. And we get some pretty damn good ratings. Then one for BJ Trainer. Definitely gonna go Vertical Threats. He's up to his scheme fits. Had one reception in each of the last two games, I think. We just completely stifled the Mahomes-led Bears. 21-3 victory. Jesse Wagner, 231, two touchdowns, no INTs. 9.6 YPA. We only allowed 97 passing yards from Mahomes. Oh man, the secondary might be dangerous. The run game is still kind of struggling, but he forced to fumble off a of Chad or uh, off a of Channing Beal. Trevor Offord, his second straight 100 plus yard day with two more touchdowns to go along with it. That's awesome. On defense, we got a sack for Raheem Finch again, and one for Warren Terry. Three tackles for loss for Quincy Baz Knights. No INTs for either team, but we had forced fumble from Buda Baker, but was not recovered. And they missed a field goal, but Koo was perfect. Good win. Oh, we sure as heck met our goal to stop Patrick Mahomes. And so... We get 2,500 XP for the entire defense. Great. And Darius Ridge will have his activator active for the entire next game against the Lions. Cool. So now we enter against the 2-1 Detroit Lions, but we also have quarterback one check-in so far. And I got to say, I have been uh, very impressed um, 
Just build chemistry. I mean, he has been great job so far. He's been doing a great job, you know? Can't call him out at all. Did the Lions score four offensive touchdowns? I mean, we'll see. For this game, upgrade point for Richards. We can only do it two more times. He is legitimately almost a perfect overall player. Wow. Plus three zone coverage. This guy is just different. He's only 27 years old, too. And we got Warren Terry. We're going to keep going. Ron Topper for him. And keep plugging those holes up front for now. George Vance had quite the performance in this game. He'll going to go with run support for him. And he has progressed extremely well in just his third season. How about Trevor Offord here in the slot? It's going to keep going deep threat because that is what he is best at. Good stuff right there. I love the jumping. Going to go elusive for Matthew Williams. Really hoping for some speed here. Can I please get some speed? Not quite. But plus two ball carrier vision. Going to go field general for Daniel Levy here. A lot of upgrade points for the entire team right now. He gets some plus one speed. Now we got one for Raheem Finch. Definitely going to go run stopper for him. Thought he had a stack in back-to-back -back weeks. We just want an absolute nail-biter against the Lions. We allowed a lot of yards. But only allowed 17 points and came out on top by one. Wow. Wagner, 241, two touchdowns, no picks. Sack three times. Gales, one touchdown, one INT. 5.4 for Gibbs. Williams only had 10 carries for 32 yards. Run game's not playing well to start the season. Trevor Offered, one touchdown. Donald, one touchdown. Gabe Davis had one, too. And I think we forced, we forced any fumbles. Not quite. Um, on defense, we had a sack for Antoine Washington and another one for Quincy Baznights. Second half for Hutchinson. And we had a pick for Forbes in this game. And it was perfect. Really solid win. Close game. Got a weekly award for Forbes, too, for his performance for the pick. Nice job. But coming off QB1 check. We didn't put as many points on the board as I hoped this week, but everybody else stepped up and showed why football is a team game. That is facts. A lot of more XP for the team. Great. Now we have a game against the 1-3 Denver Broncos, who are struggling out of the gate to start this year. Our offense is top 10, our defense is top 10, scoring-wise. Offensively, the, the yards aren't very high, necessarily, but on defense, they are. And don't forget that the Broncos... Oh, man, the Broncos. They have Damon Craig as their quarterback. We're going to be seeing him in action in this next game. He's a captain for him, I guess. So far this year... He's actually played well. Good rating through four weeks. Five touchdowns, two INTs. He's been sacked five times. 7.9 YPA, 28.3 per, per, through the air per game. I mean, he's had two solid games, one bad game, but, you know, he's having a decent start to his season, but they've lost three games in a row after a week one win. 14 points only in three straight games. That's going to be the matchup there, but just so you guys are aware, look on the right side of your screen. Wagner is top two right now in yards and touchdowns in the NFL, and then Trevor Alford at the receiving leaders is right behind Amon Ross St. Brown at number two and already has four touchdowns this season. So... Might be back to the high-flying Rams offense that we saw during our Super Bowl season. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Jesse Wagner so far this year. Um, the ground game definitely needs some work with uh, Matthew Williams for sure. But Trevor Offord is getting back to what he was doing back in his second season. The offensive line has been pretty good so far. Only three guys have allowed sacks. Uh, none from McCoy, none from our right guard, who I forget his name right now. And sack-wise, uh, pretty balanced approach, but plenty of sacks overall. And we also got a lot of picks already, four in four weeks. Very impressive stuff. Uh, the team is on the rise. The Rams are back. And um, 
I can't wait to uh, watch against Damon Craig and the Browns. Should be fun. I'll see you guys there.